his director. By the way, um, getting into the movie uh, uh, Life of Brian, by the way, does any of you admit to naming the group Monty Python's Flying Circus? Is there a controversy about who? Well, yes, we, we, the, the problem we had of finding a, a good title for it was yeah. almost the worst problem we had with the whole show. You know, we had the show written on the first one, and we didn't know what to call it. And we had a whole lot of fanciful titles, like we wanted to call it a, a horse, a spoon, and a basin. Which and a I, basin. And a basin, which I really liked. And somebody else wanted to call it uh, Bun Wacket Buzzard Stubble and Boot. Um, owl Stretching Time. The Toad Elevating Moment. There were all these suggestions. And one day we sat around and got very drunk and we had to come up with a title. And somebody had already started to call it The Flying Circus. In mm -hmm. fact, the BBC had started to call it that, and they'd started writing it in their schedules in ink, you know. So they said, well, could you call, call it The Flying Circus? Because otherwise we have to write out new schedules. So we said, it's a nice, <laughs> nice title. And um, then we couldn't decide whom. We thought it might be Gwen Dibley's Flying Circus, because she'd been Michael Palin's music teacher when he was 11. <laughs> And then somehow we went off Gwen Dibley. I don't know why. I she wonder. could be famous, you know. Had someone else used her name, uh, perhaps? <laughs> no, 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 nobody got there first. <laughs> Gwen Dibley. And somebody came out with Monty Python, and we all fell about. And uh, I, I mean, I can't explain why. We just thought it was funny that night. Presumably, you haven't been sued by anyone named that. <laughs> no, it sometimes happens no. when you were. Uh, Groucho you... Marx had that, didn't he? He had a, a character called yeah. Phineas X Flitterwaggle. One of the most preposterous names. That's and, right. And one showed up in Corning, Iowa or somewhere and That's sued right. him. That's right, sued him. Second yeah. night, yeah. Fattiest T. Flywheel? No, Something no. like that, yeah. one, one of them. By the way, uh, I, I, I have read um, The Life of Brian's uh, script. I don't know whether this is a shooting script or is it ex post facto or after the fact. Uh, put it's the shooting script mm. with, a f with, with a few things still left in that we actually edited by the time the movie got on the screen. Oh, so there's a few things in here that aren't in the film? Yes, one oh. or two of the offensive things which we took out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but if you just glance down the list of characters, uh, the Virgin Mandy and Mr. Big Nose and uh, the man further forward, and uh, so th there are many of these that are just wonderful. There's an ex-leper, which is a character, that, <laughs> sort of a stock character these days, isn't it? <laughs> and, um, a, a Deadly Dirk and Pilot's Wife and a boring prophet. <laughs> and, and in among Biggest Dickus and Intensely Dull Youth and Simon the Holy Man and so on, there's this wonderful mixture of, um, of character types. And then you notice that there are only, I think, six names. Uh, a casual observer would notice that most of the parts are played by the same people. Well, we, yes, the six of us played a lot of them. We had what there we There are other called, people, of course. Yes, but we called our repertory company, and there were five of them, and they played everything. But on the previous film, the... Uh, the Holy Grail. Mm -hmm. um, I remember the last day but one of the movie being driven to the location and I said to the driver, I said, you've, you've managed to sneak into a couple of scenes, haven't you? How, how many have you actually been in? And he said, I played 11 parts so far. The driver. <laughs> and he was aiming to get it up to 15 by the end of the movie. You know, so if, if the driver's playing 15, we're, we're working pretty hard. Has, uh, t tell me w which way the controversy has been flowing lately. Um, and, and on which side of the Atlantic is it more intense? I remember I was, I don't know how many weeks ago it was, I heard the radio uh, announcement of something that sounded in its tone as if there had been an outbreak of uh, World War II or something. And it had to do with outraged religious groups that had seen Here in New the York. film in, in New York. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think I switched on the radio to the phrase, a vicious attack on Judaism. Now, uh, at what point did you all sit down and decide to make this vicious attack on Judaism <laughs> and, uh, and Christianity and everything that everyone holds sacred? Huh? <laughs> How can we talk about that? Well, uh, we just, uh, after the Holy Grail, somebody suggested that it would be interesting mm -hmm. to try and write uh, a comedy set at the time of Christ. Mm -hmm. And you see, well, you know this, but when you start to write, you don't know where it's going to go. So you say, well, let's try this direction, and maybe it'll work, and maybe it won't. And we had an idea, maybe, that Brian was the 13th disciple, 
Mm -hmm. uh, but he, he had a very demanding wife. <laughs> and he was always late, so that, you know, he arrived two minutes after the water had been turned into wine, you know. Yeah. Missed everything. And he missed everything, and, the, yeah. and the, that he, he, ne he never got to the Last Supper because his, his wife had friends coming round, and he was <laughs> going to meet them at the garden afterwards, and he went to a club called The Garden, you know. And, yeah. and we tried this, and we found it just didn't work, because the moment that you got near the figure of Christ, I mean, really near, Mm -hmm. It just really wasn't funny because Christ was wise and flexible and intelligent mm -hmm. and he didn't have any of the things that, I mean, comedy is about envy, right, greed, malice, avarice, lust, mm -hmm. stupidity. Mm -hmm. I remember an American, uh, Harvey Orkin, once telling me, and he said, you know, you cannot make a comedy about St. Francis of Assisi, you know, I mean, there's nothing <laughs> funny about it. Yes, as they say, where do you go with it? <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> To hell it would be the, uh, the answer. Of the, so, but you know, even even talking about religious subjects in the way we are now uh, offends some people, and I don't know what assumptions lie behind that. One of them, of course, being that there's nothing funny uh, about certain things. Uh, this is wrong. I, I can't think of anything there's nothing funny about in some sense. Hmm. And same people who talk about how humor is a healing, uh, wonderful thing, yeah. uh, then don't want it applied to certain areas. Weird. A lot of I find it very difficult. But the trouble is, you know, what what do you mean by religion? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, some of the PBS viewers, I believe, may have seen a series called The Long Search, by a guy called Ronald Eyre, who made it for the BBC, uh, and it was a it was um, an investigation into thirteen programs, basically into thirteen religions. I think he did three on Buddhism. He t he travelled and and did all the basic main religions in some detail, yeah. Judaism. Lutheranism, Catholicism, I think he even did the Church of England, I think he even found a program for that. Mm -hmm. Surprised it got in under the heading of religion, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was there for variety. Yeah. <laughs> yes, a little light relief round number six. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the thing about it, when he came to see the, this film, he said, he thought it was a very religious film, and I may surprise you, if I say I think it's a religious film, I think all the, the messages in it, in fact, are profoundly religious. Yeah. But Ron Eyre did say, and I hope he won't mind my quoting him, that a lot of people that he thinks are not religious will be angry about it. And it simply depends on what you mean mm -hmm. by religion. If you take religion to be a sort of revelatory and rather authoritarian creed, mm -hmm. you know, in which certain things are handed down, must not be examined, yeah. must be obeyed, and there are, is a sort of an authoritarian structure enforcing it. If that's what you mean by religion, then I suppose it is in many ways anti-religious, but it's certainly not uh, against Christ or anything Christ said. It is against right. the manifestations of certain aspects of organized religion. Mm -hmm. And I think one's entitled to criticize people. Yes. Uh, have you seen this kind of writing about the movie? There's one a piece in the Washington Post by a man who said, uh, I'm not going to see the movie, and I realize I can be accused of uh, burning a book I haven't read, but I'm not going to go see a movie that makes fun of Christ. I don't need that. You know? mm. Well, uh, The answer is, I would swear that as far as I'm concerned, it does not make fun of Christ at any no. moment. No, in fact, uh, well, perhaps you should explain one thing about the plot uh, that we may have left out. Brian is has the, I guess, ill luck to be born on the same night right. that the three wise men are making their journey. Right. And uh, they go to the wrong place. That's the triggering mechanism. That's right. The they finish up in the wrong stable. Yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah. nice because, you know, we, we, we hear the story now of the three wise men arriving. Mm -hmm. But it's a very odd thing indeed to find three oriental astrologers in full gear carrying gold into uh, uh, frankincense and myrrh, wandering around a cow shed at two o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's odd. I mean, we accept it because we've been brought up. But if you look at it that way, it's peculiar. <laughs> what are they doing? Yeah. One of them says, led by a star. And uh, Mandy, uh, Brian's mother, says, led by a bottle more like. Which is, you know, is, is the, the, the natural reaction. assumption. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have any idea, or does anybody, where, uh, where comedy leaves off and satire begins? Um, is it satire in the movie when uh, Brian has all his followers that he definitely does not want, and they even stand outside and repeat his phrases and say, yes, oh, that's so true. <laughs> and he tries to tell them, please, don't do this. Uh, I'm capsulizing, of course. And, and then 
a wonderful moment in, in the script says, uh, remember you are all individuals. And in unison they chant, yes, we are all individuals. <laughs> Oh, that must be satire, mustn't it? I, I mean, think have we so. crossed into the line? I huh? think so, yes. And then my almost my favourite line in the movie, which never ever gets a laugh, <laughs> when he says to them, you've got to work it out for yourself. And they say, yes, we've got to yeah. work it out for ourselves. And he says, yes. And then there's a pause and they say, tell us more. And he says, no, that's the point. I got a laugh. Yes, <laughs> it, it never gets a laugh in the movie. But you redeemed it here. <laughs> I wonder why that, wonder why that should be. On.